today I've got such a busy day. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna go and get my passport photo done. Um, not for a passport though, for my eye exam for the British Board of Boxing Control. You have to take a passport photo with you and have the eye examiner or whatever they call them. Um, sign the back of the photo to say that it's you. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a little bit of makeup because I'm feeling so pasty at the moment. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of colour on to make them look poorly. So I'm just gonna get dressed and then I'll be going to Sainsbury's to do the photo. And then yeah, straight to the eye examination. So yeah, also I just thought I'd show you the outfit that I'm gonna wear. Not that I probably care, but yeah, these roots need to do so bad. Just really typical sitting it and then it says that just walking the dogs with my dad that? i'm doing a um, youtube dad say hello to youtube <laughs> oh, baby girl <laughs> i decided i was gonna have a quick sunbed so this now is the following day uh, i forgot to update the the vlog as such um yesterday but i managed to get a passport photo after um running around like i had the vision was literally perfect that couldn't have got better a better score today's job is tackling the spare room where basically when i moved back into my dad's during the colder months of the van in the spare room and it is an absolute bomb site, let me tell you. Right, I hope you're ready for this. And excuse my dad's choice of colour. I did decorate the spare room and you'll be able to tell when you see how um, different the decoration is. One of my friends, Doug Bedford, he's an artist. He painted this for me years ago um, before I turned pro. So I put that up there because I really love that. It's such a good piece of art. Um, Yeah. So this is literally what I'm dealing with. So as you can see, um, I definitely had my work cut out. It took about three to four hours in total. So I literally dragged everything out of the van, put it all into bags. And then when I shoved it in that room, I had the job then of basically finding a home for it within the house, hanging all my clothes up, folding all my washing away. It was an absolute nightmare, but just so, so rewarding. And as you can see, I was starting to get a bit hot and sweaty. So I put my hair up in a second whilst I do the last important bits. And then, yeah, voila, nice and tidy. Then I had the lovely job of sorting out my room whilst my dog laid in the bed. Um, and she was just not impressed that I made it get off the bed. And yeah. So satisfying watching me make this bed. And then she was straight on before I even finished. Queen of the castle. Excuse my dog sulking because she had to get off the bed while I made it. Spoiled pooch. I didn't sleep very well last night. Because my dad, my dog was throwing it up all night. Um, so it was a case of waking up and stripping on my bed and you know, she actually threw up in my bed which is lovely so um yeah brilliant start to the day i'm doing the best that i can to get it off i didn't want to show you the before because it was actually disgusting and no one wants to see that hi guys so um my mum is holding the camera she's kicking off because she thinks we're doing a tiktok live and we're not we're doing a youtube vlog so we're just on our way out Go and hopefully find my mum a nice little car. That's Karidi, you can hear in the background moaning. All she's done today, the bossy cow, is just tell me off for everything. Only trying to do her a favour and drive around everywhere. So I was really, really hoping that I would have loads of fun content today. I thought today was going to be like a lot of fun. <coughs> car shopping for my mum. It couldn't have been the opposite and i think she must have something really sus uh, suspicious 
something really specific in mind because everything we saw she was like no 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 there was um absolutely nothing she saw that she liked um especially within her price range we we're also meant to go and nip and get some clothes from town and we we're gonna get this matching ring that we'd seen that was just cheap but it was just nice because we wanted to, to get something that matched for us um it's just something sentimental it was nothing crazy and um neither of us could be bothered to do that because we were absolutely knackered so i took her to asda and we did a bit of a food shop and um, she got two two glass mugs that she needed and um, a little bit of clothing she did all although I must say, it was funny watching her drive around as there, as she did um, continually nearly crash into people and also take half the shop down with her trolley, her um, electric trolley, because she can't walk far because she's got COPD um, and loads of other health issues. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was funny to watch her do that. But every time I got the camera out, um, she sort of just finished like dragging half the shop with her. So I'll add some clips in, but you won't you won't see the full, um, the funny side of it because, yeah, you don't, you don't get to see her like crashing into people and stuff because obviously... How did we know she was going to do that? We didn't actually find any cars that she liked whatsoever. So the car shopping <laughs> stopped there. We had done it for a couple of hours, but that's the only video I took because it was just so windy. <laughs> you just took the whole rack with you. Where are you, Mum? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to, so you've got diabetes. So yeah, I'm really struggling for inspiration at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask a couple of people to basically give me some Q um, some questions and I'll do a Q&A. Um, so I'll head over to TikTok, Insta and Twitter and even Facebook and see if anyone's got any questions for me that I can maybe answer and add in that I think would be good to put on here that maybe nobody knows about yet or, you know, I don't know. I've got nothing exciting anyway. Um, I literally don't do anything other than um, eat, sleep, work, train, help my mum, see my dad, look after my dog. That is my life, but I think that's because obviously I'm living the life of a boxer. So yeah, um, I've got a busy week next week. Um, I've got something exciting that I'm starting, um, but I'll talk more about that once it's done. Keep fidgeting with my hair because it looks in an absolute state. I've just walked here in Gale Force Winds and it's been absolutely peeing it down. I want to obviously start building my YouTube up and hopefully just give you a real insight into me. It might not be um, exciting, but at least it's going to be real. So this is a really good question by one of my friends, Callum. Um, and he basically asked, what is the short-term goals and the long-term goals for this year? So the short-term goal is to get this fight out of the way in um, Manchester on Saturday the 18th of February because you know I've been out of the year at this point uh, out of the ring at this point a year so really I just want to get the ring rust off and I want to just get back in there now show the improvements and show the progress um as a whole of short term goals for me it's just more about um staying consistent in the gym and just getting the fights in long term goals for this year um I've got a few personal goals, so I don't know if you wanted to know if it was boxing or whatever, but this year, like, I really want to save up a load of money and um, start my own business doing something on the side of boxing that earns me extra income. Um, and also, I'd like to just build up my social media a little bit more because I absolutely smashed that last year. And then because of all the dropouts and stuff of fights, it sort of plateaued a little bit. And in my... Um, you know, if I'm being honest, I haven't pushed my social media real hard just because um, I've just been so focused in the gym and just really trying to focus fully on that. So it's really hard to divulge my time into social media as much, but I am getting back on the wagon now and I'm starting to pick momentum back up in, in all aspects of my life again. It's been a really hard, stressful year. So thank you for that question. I got asked as well if I think that um, the YouTube boxers are making a mockery of the sport. At 
first I, you know, I was obviously a little bit skeptical. Um, it depends on the boxer, I think. I think some are just doing it for clout. Others really want to take this serious and you can't be angry with that. Um, you know, Jake Paul, I know a lot of people love to hate the guy, but he treats, sorry, nearly burp there. Um, he treats the sport with respect, I think. I think he devotes his life to it. He might be a bit of a gobshite, but I think at the end of the day, he's only doing what everybody else does. People just don't like it because he's YouTube. At the end of the day, he has actually fought a lot more quality opponents than what most of us real boxers do at the start of our careers when we're facing journeymen, journey women, trying to get the experience and the rounds in. So I don't think you can knock him for that. Um, as for all the other YouTube boxers, I'm not really sure. I don't follow it that much. I mustn't lie. Um, I'm not paying for the pay-per-view Misfits boxing. I've enjoyed the build-up, the drama. I've seen little bits on the DAZN page and stuff um, on their Misfits page that comes up on Instagram. But, um, yeah, would I fight one? I don't know. It's really hard to say. I'd love to sit there and say, no, you know, I'm going to stick to just boxing, whatever. But, obviously, money always talks. And it just depends where I am in my career if it would present a good opportunity, you know, never say never. So that's my honest opinion. And sometimes you can think and say certain things about um, people coming into the sport and you may not necessarily agree with it at the start and people can prove you wrong. So, um, you know, I think as long as the boxer themselves are taking the sport serious, and they're actually dedicating themselves to it because it is a dangerous sport to be in if you're not actually interested in the sport itself and you're just doing it for clout, then I think fair play. If you're going to devote your life to it, you can't knock it. A lot of them are fighting 50-50 fights straight away. You know, none of, the, none of the building up that most of us boxers do. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, as long as, you know, nobody's getting hurt and people are being sensible with who they're fighting and stuff and they're not, doing stupid things like fighting people that are well out of the leagues and putting themselves in danger then yeah i don't really see the issue with it so this is off another um sort of good friend that i've made on twitter um over the last year he's called travis and um basically he's asked what do we think of the poor judgment in some of the boxing scores and how could this be improved um it's 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 heartbreaking to see some of the scores you know, especially when people have dedicated and put the whole life on the line for this. Um, it's, it's horrible sometimes when you watch a fight and you think that the other person should have won and the scores are really, really, really so far apart that um, it's not even close. So, yeah, sometimes it can be really disheartening even just watching it because you think, wow, what if I'm ever in that position? And, you know, a title's resting on it. You know, some of these people have lost everything um, to make this happen and then to not even get the decision when they've won is is quite sad. Um, to improve it, I think we need to update our British um, Boxing Board of Control. And this is no offence to them, but I think if you've never stepped foot in a ring um, and you've never put your life on the line, is it fair to say that you can judge a fight like that now i know sometimes obviously it's better in the terms of like their emotions aren't involved and um, but when you're having weird one-sided poor um scoring would it make a difference anyway like so i think for me the way to improve it is maybe to update um maybe the panel i would like an explanation so not just to see the scorecard but i would like an explanation after a judge has made their decision on um how they've done these scores i'd like an explanation um doesn't have to be a super long one but it has to be clear and to the point because sometimes i really would love to know how they're scoring these bouts so yeah i really want to add that um i think if they've got certain judges on this panel that sometimes people say oh well the judge was looking for better work rate or the, the judge must have been looking for like the harder cleaner shots i think when you're going into a fight like that you should be told then right this judge this judge likes this that judge likes that and you should know what type of judges you're getting because you wouldn't sit an exam without knowing the type of questions that you're going to be asked because how do you revise for it so a lot of it sometimes can be well certain judges favor certain techniques 
and they want to see certain styles well you know sometimes it's already written in the stars then before the match starts so i think to help the boxers out you should have a clear indicator or a bit of a guideline of what judges look for what and at least mix it up instead of having a panel that's maybe one-sided so a question was is there a chance that you'd be signed to a big promoter um, or would I want to? Yeah, of course, that's always the end goal. Um, that's more of a long-term goal. I think this year um, I have learnt my lesson in terms of wanting to um, like get out there and climb up the ladder as quick as I can. I think I would like to um, just do this year on maybe small hall shows and that's why um, I'm aiming to do all my shows with Pat Barrett this year. I just want to stay on small hall shows. I want to um, work in silence basically and really build the foundations that I need before I step on a stage. Because once you step on a stage like that, I feel like a lot more is expected of you and you can't, um, you know, you're learning in front of the world. And that was one of the things that I felt sorry for Campbell Hatton about was that, you know, he was just building his skills and because obviously his dad's name and stuff, people expect more, but because he was on such a, a big platform straight away, um, people weren't really giving him a chance to sort of improve and show you that he's actually learning on the job. And so, yeah, I think by watching that as well, it was just a bit of an eye opener that sometimes it's best to just make your mistakes before you get on the, the big shows. Um, so yeah, definitely would love to sign to a big promoter, um, but I also don't want to rush it either. Uh, I'm realistic, I want a long career in this. I don't want to just, um, you know, have 15 minutes of fame sort of thing. So yeah, I hope that answers that well. Good morning, Queen of the Castle. I hope you slept well. Hmm? I hope you slept well. And no sicky sick in the bed. Hmm, princess? Okay, I've over about and I'm a little bit late, <clears throat> but basically um, I've just got ready. Um, I'm going out today for a meal with my mum and her brother for like an early birthday celebration for her. Um, so I did win a lip filler competition, um, so I'm going to go and get my lips done today. Um, I know you're all going to have something to say about that, but yeah, it's what it is. It's um, my body, my face, my choice. Um, so yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to answer a couple more questions as there were some really good questions after I went to bed and I'd already done my last question. So, um, one of the questions were, how do you manage to stay motivated um, given like all the setbacks that I've had? And it's been hard it's not been hard to be motivated it's just been hard mentally like it's caused me a lot of stress and a lot of upset and um even more so when you've got people like doubting that like it's not your fault they're saying like you know or you get a couple of trolls and people are like clout chasing like trying to just start a public argument saying stuff like oh you know one comment was, oh, I doubt these fights were even legit. She's had it happen to her that many times. And it's like, well, why would I put myself through all this? Like the public embarrassment of having to keep giving me refunds and taking people's money and then having to give it back and putting myself through all these like fight camps back to back and not really having a life. You know, there's just simple things that I'm missing out on um, due to wanting to make this work. And then to keep getting let down, it is really hard. It's more just, I'm really, really, really just want to make my mark. I want to set out to to do. I set out to do this a few years ago. I gave my whole life up in Australia to make this dream of mine work, and I owe it to myself. Everybody who has followed this dream with me to at least give it a real good go and make sure that if it doesn't work, it's because I'm not good enough. Not because. I've had a few like setbacks and opponents are dropping out. I don't want it to be like that. Um, so yeah, this year I'm just going to focus on each camp and not look too far into the future. Um, 
I don't really want to talk about, a lot of people are asking like, you know, it's 2026, where do you see yourself? I don't really want to talk about the bigger goals ahead because of the, the year that I've had. Um, what I would like to do is just get back in the ring and show the improvements and keep on improving. Another question was, why has it seemed so hard to like just get a fight in general? Like, is it lack of opponents, like bad promotion, etc.? I've had a few of those questions, so just I'm going to try and answer that as briefly as I can because I know that I do waffle a lot. But basically, I feel like I've just got really bad, loads of different reasons. A lot of them have been opponents. Um, two opponents now have meant to be one opponent we booked and played, paid for the flight and they just ghosted us and never got on the flight which I just find bizarre and then another one that was a similar scenario was the board had approved it and we worked out like money, weights, all the terms and conditions that you have to and then um, we tried to book a flight and yeah she just ghosted um, th there's just been so so many things uh, opponents falling ill last minute and um, just, it just ne it's a never ending. My first debut, um, I was knocked back by the board to fight Boroslava Goranova. Um, they said it was too risky for her because of her rage, etc. So we were like, fair enough. Um, and then I ended up fighting her on, on my debut four months later. So, you know, make it make sense. I have no idea. That's why I say I think I've just had really bad luck. So, yeah hope that gives an insight there's, there's loads more than that but um to keep it as short as possible My old numbers. So I like putting it here, just behind the edge, so that doesn't stretch, just like that. And so now, pulling the keep its bolt up. So it probably will look different to what you want to pull from this. Do I want some before? No, it's like a plaster, but it's not a different plaster. I can get it if you tell me how to go. So I might look a little bit weird um, as she has this technique where she pulls them up and tapes them so that the filler stays upwards rather than outwards and um, so it's going to look good. Obviously it's very very swollen at the moment and um, so yeah. I am going to end this vlog here just because um, there's a lot of talking in this vlog, way more than I ever anticipated doing. So um, I feel like I'm just going to have bored you a lot shitless. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end this vlog here and I'm going to spend the day with my mum and 
and family and yeah just try and enjoy and relax on this Sunday and get back to the grind tomorrow I've got a busy week and it's getting closer and closer to fight night so yeah make sure you hit me up with any tickets that you, you might want and I'll put the link in the bio and you can purchase your tickets directly from there